Thank God. May the Holy Spirit, through, through His Word materialized, which is Jesus, come and open the understanding of each of you so that you may have the understanding, so all of you may think and reason and meditate according to His will, and then you can be sure that your life will be happy. You will be happy here on earth. Here on earth. Pay attention to what the Word of God says. You are going to find it there in the book of Proverbs, which says like this, pay attention. God, the Father, the Father giving an advice to His Son. He said, My Son, My Son, and it's my daughter as well, the same thing. My son, give attention to my words. Give attention. So, pay attention to what I'm saying. Think of them. Meditate on them. Drink of them. Because the word of God is the word of God. It's a word that cannot be erased, that cannot end. This word exists throughout eternity and it will exist throughout all eternity. Jesus said, by your words you are going to be condemned and by your words as well you will be justified. It all depends on your word. So we have to be very careful with our words because the words, they remain forever. Even if these are silly words, but they are registered. The man of God once said, Lord, set a guard over my mouth so that I won't speak what I shouldn't speak that which takes care of the words that proceed of their mouth, these ones are wise. Now, imagine the Word of God. Imagine the importance, the power, the glory, the majesty, the greatness of the Word of God. The Father, God Father, says, My Son, Give attention, pay attention, give ears to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings, meaning to my thoughts, my words. Incline your ear. Give ears to, to my words. Do not let them depart. Part from your eyes, which means don't let them be far from your eyes. If you need glasses, you keep your glasses on your face, but you should not keep away from the Word of God so that you may know what you should and what you shouldn't do so you can walk in righteousness, so that you can walk in truth, so that you can walk according to God's will and have integrity so you can be a righteous person before God. Pay attention, my friend. The words of God are the greatest treasure that human beings can ever have in their hands because from them come life. He says like this, do not let them depart or be far from your eyes. Keep them in the midst in the deepest part of your heart, in the deepest part of your soul, because they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. You see that the Word of God also heals. It heals the soul, 
<laughs> which is the most difficult one, let alone the body. So the word of God is health to the physical body and to the spiritual one as well. Pay attention. Let's speak in a more practical way concerning the word of God. When a person is afflicted, afraid, desperate, what do they do? When the person has knowledge of the Bible, they go to the Bible there in Psalm 91 that says like this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So they start reading Psalm 91 and they already feel immediately, immediately they feel relieved. Why is it? Because the Spirit of the Word of God is not just Psalm 91. It's the whole Bible, the whole Holy Scripture. When you read the Bible, paying attention, attentively, in, in a way that you are really want, you are thirsty to obtain from it its Spirit, then you are going to reap the Spirit of the Word of God will pass, will enter into you, and you are going to feel well. I'm not saying that you are being baptized in the Holy Spirit. It may even happen because the Word of God is the Word that brings life to those who listen to them and obey them. So, my friend, Whatever is your problem, whatever is your situation, if your problem is in the soul, the Word of God is the answer that you need. If your problem is in your physical body, then the Word of God is the answer. If your problem is in your exterior, in your relationships, it's a financial problem, problem in your business, doubts, fears, anguish, headaches, and so on. Whatever your problem is, the Word of God brings the Spirit to those who read the Word, the Spirit of life. The Word brings health, spiritual and emotional and physical health as well. Of course, of course, when you read and you feel good, Oh, okay, everything's fine now, and then you put the Bible aside. It's like a medication, right? You take a medication for headache, and then when, when the headache goes away, you leave the medication aside. And that's how people are. They put aside the most precious things to get involved, to do things that are not good, obviously they will suffer again and then they will go back there to the world to reestablish themselves and have some relief. But please, my dear friend, the text is very clear. It says like this, My son, it's this, the father speaking to the son what is best for the son. When our children are born, we parents give them gifts and, and so on. We buy clothes, things that the children like. But the most important thing is our teachings for them. Oh, my son, don't do this. Don't get involved with people who are evil who are perverse and unfair. Don't get involved with people who do this, who drink, who smoke, who do drugs. Don't get involved with them. Which means that the parents naturally want the best for their children. It's what God is showing here. My son, perhaps he's speaking to you right now, my friend. You who are there crying, suffering, seeking for something, for an answer. God is speaking to you, my daughter, my daughter. He speaks with love. Pay attention to my words. Incline your ear. 
Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart to be far from your eyes. Keep your eyes on my word. Keep them in the midst of your heart, of your soul. The word of love, word of exhortation, word of life here, because my words, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. And this is it, my dear friend. For example, you who enjoy these daily messages here, isn't it? You enjoy it. And, and if I delay a little bit, you miss it, isn't it? I know. I know that there is a thirst, a hunger. You're seeking for answers. You're seeking for God, for the Holy Spirit. So, those who are interested, they come here every day looking for a word. But these daily messages, we, we have them knowing of the need that people have because we also had and still have our needs. And when we read the word, we meditate on the word, when we pass the word onto you, I am then enjoying from these words. I'm eating and drinking from these words. And that's why I am interested in giving because the more I give, the more I receive. The more I give, the more I receive because it's the word of God. Jesus said that whoever drinks of the water, which is the word, that I shall give him this water, who is the Holy Spirit, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is typified by the water. So whoever drinks from the water that I shall give him, this water will make in him or in her a fountain that will spring up into everlasting life. The Word of God. The Word. You know that everything was created through the Word. The first text of the Bible says, in the beginning God created heaven and earth, and the earth was formless and void. Then God said, let there be light. The Word. And with His Word, light came into existence. There in the book of John, the text says like this, that the Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word is God. God is speaking to us. God is a spirit. God is not flesh. God is not a physical thing. God is a spirit. God is Word. Spirit does not die. A Word does not die. The Word does not die. It remains forever, for eternity. I know the world doesn't care about it, but I know that the Word does not die. I'm sure that the Word that glorifies God, the words of worship, of praise that we give to God, are kept in cups of gold there in heaven. But the words of hell, these are also registered, I think. They're in hell to burn that as well. So, my friend, the word is life. When you pay attention to the word of God, everything becomes new. Just for you to, to have an idea and evaluate this better. When a person destroys a marriage, why was that marriage undone? Because of one word. Why was marriage established? Because of one word. Oh, I love you. And you hear that sweet, soft voice. Oh, you look so beautiful. Oh, how nice you are. So these words 
attract and even make people get involved, even if it's not in a wrong way. But also, there are words that destroy a marriage straight away, in, in a moment. Right now, if you say a word that is contrary to the word of God to someone, you are going to destroy your relationship with that person. You can destroy your relationship with that person. Tonight, we have here in the Temple of Solomon and in all the universal churches of the Kingdom of God, the love therapy, which is the therapy of the word of love. Love. God is love. God is word. God is word. God is love. So, the word of love comes, comes from the throne of God in order to fill up the soul of those who reason and they want to resolve their love life problems, which I think, I believe, is the greatest problem human beings have. It's a problem in their love life. My greatest problem, my greatest problem was myself from the moment that I met the Lord Jesus Christ and He gave me access to His Spirit. He made His Spirit come upon me. So I resolved my problem and I entered the Kingdom of God. But later on, I was seeking for someone who had the same Spirit, the same thought, the same let's say, purpose in life, the same dreams which was to pass what God had given me to other people. So I found Esther. So you learn to love in the love therapy. You learn to love the right person which will share their love with you. The love therapy, it's not just one more meeting. It is for people who love and want to be loved. Those who are having problems in their relationships and for those who want to prepare their future and establish a union that is permanent, a marriage that is permanent a life that is permanent with somebody else because nobody is made of iron. Everybody needs somebody. Everyone needs someone. Even a homosexual wants to get married, isn't it? A lesbian also wants another person by their side. Everybody wants to have a partner. Everybody wants it. But just here between us, my friend, the partnership, the covenant, the marriage, a partnership between two people only works when both have the same spirit, the same word, the same dream, the same thought. And this happens with the word of God. When it falls in a fertile ground, then it produces life. Did you understand, my friend? Let me read this again for you. My daughter or my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. May God bless you all. And tonight at 8 p.m. here in the Temple of Solomon, Christiane and Renato will be, as usual, bringing to you what they've learned from the Word of God. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.